What's up summoners, it's time for a new patch, and like you'd expect, another patch rundown. My name is Nathan Ning, and I'll be running you through all the new changes for patch 11.12. On top of that, this video will also include tier lists curated by our high elo analysts. Make sure you hit that sub button so we can continue creating content like this, and let's get started with the video. First, I want to talk about skins. Skins are great, who doesn't like them? This patch features some very nice ones. Dr. Mundo will have new skins this patch as a result of his visual gameplay update, but we also have some new additions to the shop as well. Pool Party Braum and Set have been added to this patch. It's crazy that they just photoshopped Braum's face onto Kangas' body, but you know, Riot's not paying him enough. I love these skins and they make great additions to the collection. Check them out and let's run through the balance changes next. After an incredible run last patch, it's time for Wukong to calm down. The buffs to Divine Sunder left a strong champion in an even better place than before. He got incredibly close to breaking a 54% win rate last patch at some point, but ended comfortably above 53% while taking the spot as the third most popular top laner in Platinum and higher. This patch, his AD per level was reduced from 4 to 3.5, while his Q's bonus AD ratio is down from 50% to 40%. These are big hits to Wukong's damage output and we're dropping him back down to the S tier. Next, we have a nerf for Nasus. His passive lifesteal was reduced by 2% at all ranks. Sustain is crucial when playing Nasus. It keeps him in lane and lets him slowly but surely scale into a lanky monster. Lifesteal is essential at all stages of the game, whether he's trying to farm 1000 stacks or in the middle of a heavy team fight. While Nasus is still manageable in high elo, his ridiculously high overall win rate means that he was also overbuffed with the changes to Sunderer. We leave Nasus' placement untouched as this change is to leave him in a place where he can succeed in low elo and be playable in high elo. I know a lot of low elo players especially struggle with shutting down Nasus. If you want to clean up your early game and learn how to dominate lane, check out ProGuides.com. Our courses and coaches can help you take that to the next level. Next, we have Gnar who had his base AD reduced by 2. This is a very clear change that simply makes Gnar weaker early. Range champions are the kryptonite to many top laners. With a little less poke early on, players stand a better chance at taking Gnar head on. Also, last hitting and pushing are a little bit harder on Gnar players this patch. We'll leave him in the A tier as his nerf is rather small, like him. You know, until he gets bigger. We have one more nerf and that's for Rennington. His Q's heal per non-champion hit was reduced from 3 to 4 plus 4% 4 bonus AD to 2 to 6 plus 3% bonus AD. If the ability is empowered, that value is down from 9 to 21 plus 12% bonus AD to 6 to 18 plus 9% bonus AD. This takes away a good chunk of Rennington's sustain. In terms of landing, this makes him less snowball-y and also less safe. Later into the game, the loss of effective health definitely stings as well. Although we'll leave Rennington in the aids here for now, this nerf has definitely done some noticeable damage. Here's a buff a certain part of the player base has been waiting for. Alawi has finally been buffed this patch. Her mana per level is up by 10. Probably not the change they wanted, but it does help a little at least. Don't forget that the Sunderer buff this patch has already left her in a decent spot though. We'll leave Alawi in the B tier for now, but she's definitely close to pushing A tier. Malphite was hit hard by the Bramble Best's nerf last patch. It was a huge power spike for him. Extra damage on top of healing reduction made him a great answer to several top lane fighters. He felt a little bit lackluster and was buffed this patch as a result. His W on hit damage has gone up from 10 to 50 plus 10% armor to 15 to 55 plus 15% armor. We'll leave him in the S tier as this simply gives him back some lost strength. Dr. Mundo has received his update this patch and we'll make sure to keep an eye out and have any placement for him ready in the near future. Also, here's our question of the day. This is a thought that I recently had, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you think intentionally including characters that are bad makes the game more fun? Because I personally do. Sometimes. I mean, from a competitive aspect, it's not a good thing, but I believe it makes the game more enjoyable through meme potential. I also know that a lot of gamers get a kick out of playing bad or low tier characters. We call these masochists. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and let's get back into the video. A quick change that we made is we bumped Urgot back up into the S tier. While the buffs to Warden's Mail and its upgrades hurt him quite a bit, Urgot continues to dominate in most elos. He remains an above average pick in high elo, but again, he's weaker than before as there's stronger itemization options against him. The final change to our top lane tier list is that we bumped Camille up to the S tier. Her win rate shot up significantly last patch and surprisingly, part of the reason was the buffs to Divine Sunderer. It gained a lot of popularity and is purchased only a little less than Trinity Force. It's a great option to have and you can build it in matchups where you prefer those very short one-hit trades. For team fights, it could also be a great way to break through the front line, and having that flexibility allows Camille players to adapt to most situations. Our OP picks for this patch are now Set and Shen, followed up by Lee Sim, Riven, Mordekaiser, Fiora, Nocturne, Jax, Silas, Malphite, Garen, Darius, Gwen, Wukong, Camille, and Urgot in the S tier. 
Moving forward, let's run through the jungle. Let's start with Udyr. Several indirect nerfs have been slowly bringing him down. Once the strongest jungler in the game, he's now just a ghost of his former self now. Riot has deemed him a bit too strong still, and he's receiving yet another nerf. His R's cone damage has gone down from 60 to 310 plus 70% AP to 50 to 275 plus 80% AP. If you go full AP Udyr, this is a buff in the late game, but 99% of the time, it's a nerf to his strong clear speed. He'll remain in the A tier for now. Ramus was also a victim of the Bramble Vest nerfs last patch. It's been so good to build, and now that item is significantly weaker, players are at a loss at what to build now. With his damage lower than before, it's safe to give him a buff. His W bonus armor has gone up from 30 to 40, while his ultimate's cooldown has gone down from 130 to 90 to 110 to 80. Both of these buffs are decent, but the 20 second reduction on his level 1 ultimate is huge. Having it ready for a fight faster can make all the difference in regards to how the rest of the game plays out. Although, we'll leave him in the beats for now, we'll keep our eyes on him and we'll see if he'll move up a tier or not. Next up, Hecarim has gotten some more buffs. His armor was raised from 32 to 35, while his Q's bonus AD ratio is up from 75% to 85%. The Q buff is especially huge on him, and if you manage to pick up some early kills, players should snowball much harder than before. This is a solid buff, and Hecarim looks like he'll actually push into the B tier this time. Talk about horsepower. Rather average for the entire season, it's time for Jarvan to stand out with a buff. Jarvan's ganks has always been pretty solid, and with this buff, he should be rewarded heavily for picking up early kills. His W's cooldown was reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. This is actually an insane buff. Early on, he's a bit safer to pick, and should end up a bit healthier by the end of his clears. In the mid to late game, however, you're going to be ending up significantly tankier. Especially with some ability haste, this buff should allow Jarvan to easily cast 2 or 3 times in a fight. The extra bolt can potentially make all the difference, and we moved him up to the A tier. Kane has made a comeback as well. Bugged back in patch 11.9, the results have finally started to surface. I'm sure Bramble Vest nerfs could have contributed to this. You often scrap with tank your enemies early on when you want to go for red form Kane. We've moved him up to the S tier. Our OP picks for the jungle are Leeson and Kha'Zix, followed up by Elise, Evelyn, Nunu, Ivern, Fiddlesticks, Diana, Kane, Shaco, Zack, Shin Zhao, and Kindred in the S tier. That will cover the jungle, so let's run through the mid next. A lot of mid laners are happy to know that Talon was nerfed. Playing against him can feel oppressive, overextended once, and suddenly, you might have started the end of the game. His W initial damage has gone down from 45 to 105 plus 55% bonus AD to 40 to 80 plus 40% AD. The return damage, however, was increased from 45 to 145 plus 70% bonus AD to 50 to 170 plus 80% bonus AD. As you'd expect, this change moves a decent chunk of the initial throw damage to the pullback. There's more damage on that part that's easier to dodge and less damage on the part that's practically unavoidable. Though the damage is practically untouched if you land both parts, this change creates more outplay potential. A fancy sidestep or flashing at the last possible moment can change the way the fight turns out with a shift of damage. We'll keep him in the S tier for now, however. Next, Ziggs has been buffed. His Q's damage was raised from 85 to 265 to 85 to 285. Also, his ultimate's medium long range missile speed went up from 1550 to 2250. Both of these buffs are solid. Some extra damage means that the poke will stick out harder than before. The ultimate buff makes landing it much easier. In both team fights, when you're walking into the river for a quick attempt at sniping the side laner, this change will make it significantly easier to land Ziggs' ultimate. We'll leave him in the C tier for now, but I think there's a good chance that he can be pushed towards the B tier, but not as support with teleport. Our OP mid lane picks are now Yasuo and Zed, followed up by Pantheon, Talon, Annie, Fizz, Echo, Kiana, Viego, Diana, Ari, Yone, LeBlanc, Cassidy, and Silas, Anivia, Vladimir, Katarina, and Lee Sin. <laughs> well, that's a hefty amount. That's it for the mid lane, so let's go ahead and talk about the bot lane next. Kaisa had it coming. As the most popular bot laner for a majority of the season, she's received a significant nerf this patch. Her Q's cooldown was increased from 8 to 6 seconds to 10 to 6 seconds. This specifically hurts Kaisa's early game, but of course, that indirectly hits her late game. Having that increased cooldown means that it's harder to take a fight with Kaisa. It also hurts her ability to farm and also push waves. Whether it's because you miss minions or get zoned off of them, you're probably going to end up with a little less gold early on. By level 9, the nerf will be negligible, allowing Kaisa to remain a viable late game carry. We'll leave her in the S tier after this nerf. Varus was also nerfed this patch. Although Halo Blade nerfs did some damage, Riot has kept him on their radar. This patch, his W bonus damage has gone down from 10.8 to 25.2% to 9 to 21% missing health. It's a pretty big nerf that lowers his kill pressure rather significantly. For now, we'll be leaving him in the B tier. Now for buffs, let's talk about Draven first. Draven, by design, is a high risk, high reward marksman. You need to dominate the lane and not only pull ahead, but also put your opponent behind. 
there are plenty of picks who are up to the challenge of fighting him head on, and Draven doesn't really feel as rewarding as he should. This patch, he's receiving a solid buff, which low-key kind of scares me. His Q's bonus damage has gone up from 35 to 55 plus 65 to 105% bonus AD to 40 to 60 plus 70 through 110% bonus AD. We'll leave him in the A tier, but we'll make sure we keep an eye on him and see if he pushes into the S tier. Aphelios was also buffed this patch. There's a long list of changes, so let's get started. His magic resistance has gone up from 26 to 30, and his AD per level from 2.4 to 3. Next is his Q. The number of attacks from Severum's Q is reduced from 6 plus 1 per 33% bonus attack speed to 6 plus 1 per 50% attack speed. However, the damage per attack was increased from 10 to 30 plus 21 to 30% AD to 10 through 40 plus 20 through 35% AD. The basic attacks from Severum is now down from 3 to 20% to 3 to 10%, while the passive healing on spells is up from 3 to 20 to 9 to 30%. So what does this all mean? No freaking idea. Next up is Crescendum's Q damage per auto attack has gone up from 25 to 85 plus 35 to 50% AD to 31 to 100 plus 40 to 60% AD. The mini chakram damage was also reduced. The base damage has been reduced from 0.24 AD to 0.15 AD. However, the penalty for each chakram hitting was also reduced. The multiplier was changed from 0.035 to 0.015. It's a lot to take in, but we'll make sure to keep an eye on him and see if he moves up the tier list. The final change that we made this list is that we moved Jinx down from the OP tier to the S tier. Last patch featured a ton of other picks rising up and a fall off in Jinx's popularity as well. Our OP picks for the bot lane are Samira and Ezreal, followed up by Jinx, Kai'Sa, Ash, Vayne, Jin, Seraphine, Swain, Sivir, and Trisana in the S tier. Finally, we'll conclude with the supports. This patch, we don't have any support changes to really talk about. Our tier list as a result sees very little movement. While we moved Rakan up to the B tier, there are a ton of picks that are still on the fence. Sona and Yumi, two notable late game enchanters, are definitely close to moving up into the S tier, which I hate them so much, especially Yumi. With core items recently being buffed, they've seen more and more success, and Sona's win rate actually exceeded 52% in Platinum and Higher last patch. Win rate isn't everything though, and she's still a fragile pick that can easily be abused by not only aggressive lane opponents, but by proactive mid laners, junglers, and potentially top laners. That being said, in slower games, Sona has plenty of time to scale up, and her late game is incredible. She provides a ridiculous amount of utility, and her existence alone is basically an aura that buffs up her entire team. The same thing can basically be said about Yumi, and she's also the worst. One last thing I'll mention about supports is that Lulu's ban rate in Platinum and Higher has exceeded 40%, while her ban rate in Diamond and Higher pushed past 50%. Players really hate her, and nerfs might be coming her way very soon. Our OP picks this patch are Leona, Thresh, and Lulu, followed up by Bard, Morgana, Nautilus, Blitzcrank, Maokai, Zyra, and Senna. That'll be concluding our 11.12 patch rundown. I hope you guys liked it and let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Also, check out the description for a link to our Discord. We run giveaways and have a great active community as well. And sometimes I go in a chat if you want to hang out with me, but that might be a deterrent. I understand. Join it anyway. Best of luck on the Rift Summoners. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.